Hey everyone, welcome to this week's UB Chef menu. I'm just about to take you through the 10 dishes that we've made for you in this weekend's box. Don't forget, have a look online at next weekend's menu, it's another stunner. So let's get cooking for now. We've got the smoked haddock, a uh, little Kiev coming up with that lovely Cafe de Paris butter you're going to cut into it, it's going to flow out, it's going to be beautiful. So for now, let's get cooking. First up is our bread course this week. So unwrap and you will find our lovely sourdough. This is our house made sourdough, a few black treacle going in there. That's going to go in the oven about 12 to 14 minutes, but really until it's nice and crisp on the outside, hot in the centre, take it out, give it a couple of minutes just to rest before you slice it. So let's get that in. And then my garnishes. First up, we've got smoked chicken butter in here, super tasty. So look at that, you've got a ball of butter, it's all moulded for you, and then in here, this is our smoked chicken scratchings just in there, so you've got all the, all the scratchings, pour them onto a tray, and then what you want to do, just sort of flatten them out, take your butter, and then just get your scratchings, get a few kind of pushed into the butter first of all, so that you can just pick it up, and then pick up the butter, get some more of a scratchings and just go around and just push them in and that way you're going to end up with this lovely crispy sort of shell butter on the outside so once you go to that stage just onto your dish like so make sure it's not going to roll off anywhere a couple more of those scratchings just to garnish and you can imagine this when you get that lovely sourdough you're just going to sort of go in with a knife and spread this and at the same time get those beautiful crispy scratchings. So, we can save those scratchings for later. I'll be back shortly when my sourdough's all heated up just to slice this on the side and then we'll be ready to go. Okay, just grab my sourdough out now. It's been about 10 or so, 12 minutes. But again, just until that top, you can sort of you know, hear it nice and crispy on the top. And all I'm gonna do, I want the, the nice ends in this as well, so slice away. Be careful, but serrated knife is best, but just be careful because it's quite easy to catch yourself on there, especially a new one. So, get the final slice, put it back together on your plate, get the knife underneath, just fan that out so you can see in, into the sourdough, a tiny bit of mold and salt on top of my smoked chicken butter, and that is it. Lovely way to start the uh, menu. Uh, really unctuous is just butter up that bread with that chicken uh, scratch and butter. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, first start of you. This is a little Kiev here. So this is a smoked haddock Kiev. Something a little bit different to what we've done before. So in there you've got, in the centre you've got the butter. I mean, this is a Cafe de Paris butter. So in there you've got some curry, you've got Tabasco, you've got Worcester sauce, uh, capers, gherkins, lots going on. Then we've got a smoked haddock mix around the outside and it's in a little panko bread crumb. That wants to go in the oven for about 12 to 14 minutes. That's when that goes. And then my garnishes, I've got this little cucumber salad, really, really simple. It's got some pink peppercorn, it's got some fresh dill on there. Before you come to serve it, take a little bit of your lime and dill dressing, just a little bit, on like so. A little bit of extra salt. Again, you don't have to, but I prefer a little bit of extra seasoning. Then just dress your cucumber around. And what's going to happen, that dress, dressing is going to start almost wilting the cucumber slightly. So that when you come to plate it, you'll be able to kind of just curl those cucumber pieces nicely around your uh, Kiev. So we're back in about 10, 12 minutes and I'm going to show you how to put this final one together. I'm just getting my Kiev out of the oven now. Here it comes. So in there, remember you've got that Cafe de Paris butter in the centre and a nice bit of it too, so be quite careful. Don't knock it about too much. Just gonna add a tiny bit of seasoning, just onto the top of it in readiness for serving. And I've got my bowl. I'm just gonna take my cucumber. What we wanna do is just kind of arrange your cucumber around the kind of bowl, but give a bit of a gap in the center to place your Kiev shortly. So. Get all the way in. This is dressed with that lovely lime dressing. We've got lime juice in there, we've got a bit of olive oil, pink peppercorn, and of course some fresh dill. So it's nearly all good. 
We're using a little pair of uh, tongs as well, with little tweezers there. Really good for sort of placing stuff. And then let's get a little bit more dressing. Just add a little bit around. That's got a good acidity in there, which will just cut through that rich butter, like so. And all that's left. Let's get our lovely Kiev here in the centre, and then tiniest little bit of butter. It's just come out. I'm gonna just cut that vinaigrette with that, just going around the outside, and that's it. So this is all ready for me now to get the get my knife and fork, dive into and crack that butter out. Hope you enjoy it. Next start it is a venison pastrami. So here we've got a lovely venison saddle which we brine and we've smoked for about four or five hours over apple wood. Now what I'm gonna do, just cut it open carefully. Again, make sure it's not fridge cold, really, really important that. But you can see there, have a look at that. Just come in and I'll show you how that looks. Look at that, beautiful moist venison. Lo lovely little bit of spice on the top with the pepper and juniper. Then the garnishes. So in here you've got a little uh, coleslaw made from celeriac and apple. And what you want to do is give that a stir and then take it out and just get that onto your plate in like a nice sort of shape that's similar to what the uh, venison is. Because the venison is going to sit on top of it. So basically get it on, spread it out so it's not got sort of lots of bumps in it. You want it to be nice and even so that the venison can sit properly on the top got a nice nice portion of this so get that all out right, so there we go so at that stage then what you want to do is get your venison now it's on the little bit of card so I'm gonna take off the paper on the back so that's the non presentation side and then just take your plate and simply flip the venison onto the top and then peel off look at that so, now we've got our venison all sorted. I've got pumpernickel croups just in here, lovely little bits of pumpernickel crispy. I've got some sorrel cress just in here. It's a really, really lovely little delicate leaf. Beautiful little veins just on the back of it. So I've got a sorrel cress there. And then we've got some fresh apple and we've got an apple gel. So, always do cut your apple. So this is Gray Smith, nice and acidic. What I'm gonna do is just slice off the end and then slice some nice thin slices. Be very careful with your hands as you slice them. Your fingers, sorry. Take off a little bit of the end of the apple. And then see how you just use, a, use your sort of knuckles just to make a little bit of a barrier against the knife and just cut down so you've got some nice thin pieces. Save the apple for the rabbit or munch away. Ben, what we'll do, cut the end off our a little piping bag, which has got our apple gel in, and then pipe some nice little piles of the apple gel, and a few on the plate. There we go. Then I'm going to get little pieces of apple, I'm just going to put some crisscrossed, some just sort of standing up against the uh, against the venison itself. You get quite a few on there because that the venison is quite powerful. And this apple adds a really nice freshness to the dish. So that's my apple. Then I'm going to take a few of my little pieces of pumpernickel and I'm just going to place those. Don't need too many of it, too, too much of this. It's just for that little bit of the texture. So I'm just going to add like that, and all that's left is take some of those leaves and then just place them. And again, play the colours, try not cover too much of the venison up when you're placing these. But equally, you want to disperse them nicely over so when you eat it, you'll get a little bit each time. So, maybe one more on there. There we go tiny bit of rapeseed oil just to finish and also tiniest bit of salt 
just on that top of that pastrami. And that is it. So that is my lovely little venison pastrami, a little a coleslaw of apple and celeriac, sorrel crest, apple gel, and some lovely toasted pumpernickel from the Island Bakers. Hope you enjoy it. Here's my vegetarian starter now for you. This is a capaccio beetroot. So in there, got a lovely beetroot capaccio with golden and candy beetroot, it's a nice colour. We've actually sent you the red beetroot separately so it doesn't all die this one, otherwise it all ends up the same colour. So what you want to do, slice open your capaccio like so, and you'll see that it's back to paper both sides. So what I suggest you do, just turn it out onto your board so that the presentation side is facing down. Then get your little beetroot relish, this is beetroot and horseradish, and I'm going to put a thin layer of this over my plate. So this is quite kind of like a nice little spice to it about horseradish. So I'm just going to spread it out like so. And obviously the beetroot, as soon as it sort of hits the plate, it's going to stain. So try and not put it too wide or wider than what your actual uh, capaccio is going to go. So like that. Got my shape now, I'm going to put a little bit more just on the top. There we go, quick rinse. Then, what I'm going to do, peel off the paper from the back of the uh, capacho. Now, I'm just going to lift it up, get it onto my hand like so, just turn it over and sit that on the top. Peel off your paper nice and carefully because you're already starting to see this come together now. Slice open your red beetroots and same again, but with this, just peel off the paper. And then this is just up to you where you kind of place these. But I'm just going to take a little bit at a time, one piece at a time. But they would make the whole capaccio red if we sent it up on top of it. You can already see it starting to die. Then, what we want to do is where we start finishing it nice and simple. Your little smoked beetroot dressing just here. Take a spoon, dress over the top. Watch it because it will spread out. So you just want a nice, nice even bit of that on there. A little bit of seasoning. There we go. And then finally, place your little beetroot crisps. So we've got some golden, we've got candy. Look at those beautiful candy beetroots. Lovely. Let's just place them all over. And then finally, a little bit of crunch. And again, a little touch of saltiness. We've got some deep fried capers, which are, of course, caper, beetroot, horseradish, well, combinations there, isn't it? So, a few more of those, and that is it. I think you'll agree, that's a lovely combination of flavors and colors for a lovely, fresh starter. Hope you enjoy it. Fillet of pollock now with a lovely stuffed courgette flour. So here you've got your piece of pollock, lovely and coloured off. We've salted it so it firms up the, up the pollock nicely. That's going to go into the oven, eight to ten minutes, and that goes. And then the courgette flour, here it is. So you see there you've got the courgette flour stuffed with a lovely Israeli couscous, which is like a bigger sort of grain of couscous going in there. And then you've got the, uh, the actual courgette on the end. Be careful with this because it can break off, it's very, very delicate. That's going to heat up for about six to eight minutes in a steamer. Now, if you haven't got a steamer, fear not, because you can make it in a few different ways. If you've got like a metal colander or a metal sieve, absolutely fine. Just put that in, like so. Get a bit of foil, and then just foil it over the top, loosely, and then put that over the top of your pan. This is just simmering water in there. Wrap the foil down, and there we go. That's going to steam now, just on the side, six to eight minutes, no more. Whilst all of that's cooking, what you want to do is take your courgette salad. So in there I've got my yellow and green courgette, all nicely cut. A few, there we go. You've got a nice little fresh lemon dressing. Do it stir and put a little bit of it over the courgette with a touch of seasoning. Work that in just with your hand, just Make sure it's all nicely coated. And again, what will, what will happen is the courgette will start to wilt down. So don't, don't kind of finger it too much because it will break up. So you want to just let it wilt. And then a garnish, 
what I've got is a, har a harissa mayonnaise. So this is rose petals, a touch of chili. This is going to be served uh, warm. So I'm going to put this just on the side of the stove. When we're nearly ready to plate, I'm going to stir it, but don't let it catch because again, it's a mayonnaise. So if you let it sort of sit there, it will scramble. And then we'll also have a little bit of lemon dressing just to touch uh, around the outside. So back in about eight minutes or so, when I'll show you how to put this lovely little stunning dish up together. Okay, here comes my Harissa mayonnaise. That's just been warmed up. It's not, not let that on the stove by itself, otherwise it will scramble. Then, do my courgette flour there, just take that foil off the top. Be careful with it, of course, it's just come up the steamer. Just lift that onto a tray, ready to serve. Then let's grab our pollock out. Lovely piece of pollock all ready to go. So to plate, first things first, I've just got a warm plate there, not hot again because of the mayonnaise. So I'm just gonna literally put some mayonnaise around my plate. Then I'm gonna get a nice little pile of uh, the courgette. Let it drain slightly. like so, curl it over, then you get a bit more height for it, and this is to sit your piece of pollock on, that's why I'm using hands here. There we go. Then what I'm gonna do, go in, let's grab our piece of pollock, sit that just on the top, like so. And then our courgette flour. Now what I suggest here is a little pair of scissors just to cut that film open. That just allows you to very, very carefully, of course, because it's a little hot as well, so you can just pull the film off like so. Let's get rid of that. Let's put a tiny bit of seasoning just on the top. And then essentially just kind of Space out that courgette, use a little pair of gloves if your fingers are a little bit sensitive, and then lift it up by the, by the sort of flour at one end onto the plate. There we go, looking lovely. And then finally, a bit of lemon dressing, a tiny bit over that courgette flour to really shine it up, a little bit over the fish, and a tiny bit around. This is just going to cut through rich mayonnaise, sorry with that bit of spice. There you go. I think you'll agree with that. Beautiful heading into summer dish of grilled pollock, stuffed courgette flour, and a little spicy harissa mayonnaise. I've got a cutlet of Dingley Dale pork for you here. Cut it open, and I'll do a little uh, sous vide bag that it comes in. And then what you want to do, Take the paper that's on the top, take that off, put that onto your baking tray. Tiny bit of oil as well, just so it doesn't stick. And then what we've got here, I'm just going to show you. So you've got the pork cutlet with the fat just coloured off nicely. And we've got a little bit of tomato fondue. We've got a soft herb crust on there. That's going to be only up about 16 to 18 minutes. So in that goes. And then we've got a little semolina gnocchi just here. And we've got charred broccoli. These are going to be up about five or six minutes or just until they're hot. No, it don't take long. And I've got a little red wine and roasted pork sauce, which is just going to get heated up just before we're ready to serve. So we're back in about 16, 18 minutes, and I'll show you how to put the pork together. Nice hot plate there, ready to serve up the Dingley Dale pork cutlet. And there's my red wine and roasted pork sauce. Semolina and gnocchi. Pork with a semolina and gnocchi. Don't let them in the oven for too long because they will burst. So, just that eight minutes, so it's absolutely fine. And there's our pork. When the pork comes out, get a fish slice. Just kind of go under that paper, lift it off onto your board, just so that it can be resting. Then we're going to start to build this up. So we've got a warm plate. Take our broccoli. It's been charred, like honestly, the flavour of charred broccoli is absolutely lovely. Lovely little smoky sort of touch to it. I'm just going to add the broccoli around the plate, almost creating a little bit of a kind of stage 
from which to set our pork chop. So we've got a good amount in there, lovely, vivid colours. Then let's get our semolina gnocchi. Place those around. There we go. As you can tell, this is absolutely all about that pork cutlet. Then sit the pork in the centre. Tiny bit of uh, seasoning just on the top. And then sauce, just a little bit carefully in between each layer. Of course, you can serve a bit more at the table. Sometimes nice just to put a touch of sauce so that it doesn't kind of like sort of destroy your presentation of the dish. And that is it, there you go. Sauce in a jug to the table and dive into that super tasty Dingley Dell pork cutlet. Vegetarian main course this week is a risotto of watercress and mushroom and summer truffle in there as well. So in here I've got risotto, that's the rice which is already pre-cooked. There's some little bit of butter in there, there's mushrooms, uh, and there's a lovely bit of summer truffle all grated. And then we send you with the risotto cooking liquor as well. So this is a watercress liquor again. All of that goes in to the risotto, and then that goes on heat. Get it on a medium heat, a little stir, and then basically once that comes up to a simmer, knock the temperature down slightly, and then keep stirring it, kind of, you know, not, not continuously, but quite often, for about four minutes and then that should be all ready to go. Garnishes, I've got these little jalouse with mushroom going between it, uh, the layers and truffle of course. One to two minutes in the oven. That's just to sort of re-crisp them, make them super fresh. And I've got some fresh watercress which is going to go on the top. And then I've got this interesting little thing here, this is a cured egg yolk. So this has been put on salt with some lovely herbs and spices in there. And then we're just going to, you want a fine grater, ideally. These are great microplanes they're called. Just get one of those just grate that on the top. If you don't have a fine grater, a normal grater is absolutely fine. So we'll be back in about, it's just, just come up to simmer now, so I'm just going to turn that down. So we'll be back in about four minutes where I'm going to show you how to put my watercress vegetarian main course together. Okay, let's get my plate out there, all hot, ready to go. There's my jalousies. I've got them onto my board. My watercress risotto, which has just been cooking away just coming up about four minutes now. You'll see it will start to thicken up. They're lovely and creamy. And again, take it a little bit further if you prefer your rice, not quite as al dente. Equally a little bit less if you prefer it more al dente. So, see that lovely and creamy. Let's get that going into our, into our bowl. Got those lovely oyster mushrooms going through it. It's just load like lovely bit of risotto. This is a main dish, star of a show, of course. So we're not going, not going light. There we go. Then I'm going to put my little jalousies just sitting on the side like so. Tiniest bit of rape still just on that watercress. Just give it a little. Little mix again, tiny season. I'm just going to get a few pieces. This is quite quick now, so it doesn't wilt. Just get some nice pieces of that cress, just to add even more like vivid green colour to the top. And of course, when you go into it, that lovely little peppery note coming off of there. So, maybe one more leaf and then we will be ready to finish off. There we go. So, a little clean up, and then the yolk. So just on top, slice, slice it kind of sideways so that you get them off, and then see how it just grates, lovely. And get plenty on there. Grate it around the side of the dish as well, so you've got the contrast of color. And there we go. Lovely risotto watercress, cured egg yolk on the top, jalousie with mushroom and truffle, and the summer truffle going through the risotto. Here I've got my first dessert for you. This is a salted caramel tart or a salted caramel slice. So basically you unwrap your salted caramel, a little bit of uh, modern salt, 
if you like, or sea salt, just on the top. Don't have to do that, but I like that little uh, sort of salty kick on there. And then cut the end off your little raspberry gel. And then what we're gonna do, empty out your little raspberries, and then garnish the top of your tart. Just for those beautiful raspberries. Just gonna get them nice and even on the top, like so. Then, what we'll do is take some of our chocolate shavings. Now, keep the chocolate shavings in the fridge until the last second, because of course, they will wanna melt. And just get the chocolate shavings and just place those, and remember I'm doing this off of the plate you don't want the whole plate to end up covered with the shavings so load them up like so happy with that then very very carefully lift it up with a palette knife move it away and then we'll just transfer that onto our plate and I'm going to get my raspberry gel just to finish off. And I'm going to go there. We go. That's it. Lovely and simple salted caramel slice, uh, fresh raspberries, bitter chocolate raspberry gel. My last dessert for you this week is an elderflower panna cotta. So here you've got a really, really lightly set panna cotta flavoured with fresh elderflower that is uh, on the trees at the moment. Then here, really, really lovely, look at that, lovely little crystallised elderflower blossom. So beautiful, that is really nice. Strawberries, English strawberries, honeycomb, and a bit of grappa just to go over the top, which really does finish this dish off nicely. So get a pan of water, just scalding. And then what you want to do, have ready your tray just to sort of like turn it out over so it doesn't go to the worktop. And then just literally lower the panna cotta very, very quickly in. Let the water drip off so you don't burn your hand. And then essentially turn it out. And this is why we do it here. You see, it wasn't much of a drip, but a little bit of a drip so you don't want that to sort of spoil your presentation. And then very, very carefully just sit that and move that into the centre, like so. Just gonna rinse my hands. And then what we'll do, let's move that hot water out of the way so we don't have any accidents. Let's get our strawberries out on the tray. I'm just gonna slice, you slice these however you like. I'm just gonna kind of take some nice little pieces, like so. Of course, eat the ends. You can smell these like bang on in season now. Lovely and floral. So take a bit of time slicing those. Final one just there. And then we're gonna place these. Again, up to you how, how you sort of go. I quite like this little sort of effect going round the outside of the bowl. That's why I just took the one of the ends off just so I could get a nice little flat surface to, to start off with. So a few more going round. There we go. Just get a lovely little one in there. Squeeze that one up a bit. I want plenty of strawberries in mine. So, like so. Then what we're gonna do is empty out that little bit of crystallized honeycomb and take some of your Sorry, the uh, elderflower and of course the honeycomb, and then we're just literally gonna place a few pieces of the honeycomb. Play with the colours here, of course, and then we're gonna get our elderflower again. Be really careful when you separate it, so we get that nice, like exactly how the the elderflower would look on a tree. Good bit of that around the outside. 
lovely little crispness to it. And then finally, take your grappa, spoon or so grappa over the panna cotta. Try and not get it on the actual elderflower itself because it will make it go soft. That glazes it up nicely, straight to the table. And this is, this is like summer on a plate. Lovely elderflower panna cotta with that wobble, strawberries, honeycomb, elderflower crisps. Enjoy. Finishing off this week's menu is our Yubi Chef Tato cheese tasting. So, as you, if you've had it before, of course, if you watch these videos regularly, make sure it's been out 15 minutes before you're gonna consume the cheese. Just unwrap, take that paper off the top. And then what I'm gonna do is just place the cheese. So, I've got a nice Manchego Comte. And then we've also got Tellaggio. That's nice and soft, of course, where it's been left out. A little white between just to make sure it's, don't get the flavors mixed up. Then we've got a little bit of long, wash rinded from Champagne region. And then finishing off with that super soft Gorgonzola Naturel. I'm gonna get my little bit of quince, which goes lovely with a manchego. So it's just gonna go on there. We made an olive white tomato with a little chutney here for you. And this has got black onion seeds. As you can see those all going through it. So, Chutney loaded in. And again, this one's really nice for Gorgonzola, but also with that lovely Tellaggio just on there. So let's get our chutney sitting in. Fennel seed crackers, which is a real favourite when we serve the Ubi Chef cheese tasting, just because you get that little pop in seeds as you kind of crunch down the crackers. It's really, really nice. Load those in a little fork or a little bowl, whichever you prefer. And that is it. Serve your cheese notes alongside or rehearse these previous, uh, prior to serving and pressure all your guests. And that is it, that concludes this week's uh, Yubi Chef menu. Hope you've enjoyed it. Remember, have a check of next week's menu, always four weeks ahead so you can plan ahead with your guests. This is really, really great for entertaining now where we can, of course, uh, mix with our friends. Make, let's make the most of it. Have a check next week's menu and I'll see you soon.